Hey everybody, what's up? I hope everybody's enjoying their Thursday. Kind of forgot it was Thursday, so there's that. It's been that kind of week. Um, welcome to episode number two of Friends with Benefits series, where I'm interviewing different friends of mine each week um, who have either a lot of knowledge or just personal experience in different realms of health. Um, today I'm interviewing my friend Ashley. Some of you may know her. She's an angel. I love her. Um, we're going to be doing a conversation about everything introductory to the science and medicine of Ayurveda. If you've heard about Ayurveda before, I'm so glad and I really hope that you get more out of this conversation. And if you've never heard of it, I really hope that, um, you are inspired to learn more about it after this. Um, Ashley is here. Let me get her on. Uh oh, how does this work again? I thought I knew. So you should be coming on in a second. Um, oh, there you are. <laughs> it worked. Hey, Angel. Hey, Dre. So, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. So I was literally t- telling everyone um, what we're going to be talking about. What I know we talked a little bit ago, but what I didn't tell you that I want to mention now that's kind of relates and it's so funny is that earlier this week, um, I was having a conversation with my dad about health and because he he has stomach problems and so do I, but he takes meds and I don't want to take over the counter meds, as you know, because I come to you for like other remedies and he so he likes to get into like argumentative conversations and he's like, well, you know, you look into all these like holistic approach medicines, there has to be something out there that is like a personalized, um, has personalized treatments for people. And like, I didn't automatically think of it. And then after when I was preparing for our interview, I literally sent my dad everything about Ayurveda. And I was like, this is it. I found it, dad. (laughs) Um, So for those of you who don't know Ashley, I'd like for her to introduce herself just so you can get to know her, follow her and love her. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Okay, so my name is Ashley, like Dre said. Um, If you don't know me, I am 31 years old. I'm a current student. Um, I am an Ayurvedic practitioner. I just finished my two years. Um, That makes me at a practitioner level. And I am going to pursue two more years to uh, complete my doctorate level in Ayurveda. I also have a background (laughs) in yoga. Um, I'm trained 500 hour in Samporna Hatha Yoga, and I also have a certification in Yoga Nidra. Um, And yeah, I'm originally from South Florida, born in Miami, grew up in Pembroke Pine, Southwest Ranches, Davie area, and for the past two years or so, I am in the high dry desert in Albuquerque, so total flip which has been a very interesting journey in itself. But, you know, you have to make compromises and do what you got to do for your goals and for the proper knowledge um, that I'm seeking. So kind of like in a quick little simple nutshell, that's who I am if you don't know me. (laughs) Now you know, right? (laughs) Now you know. (laughs) So for people who don't know anything about Ayurveda, how would you explain what that is? Yeah, so Ayurveda, there's so much depth to it. Um, and I'm going to keep it like super, super simple today. It's going to be like preschool, kindergarten level. Um, and even with that, uh, you'll be able to learn so much. But Ayurveda, Ayuhu in Sanskrit means life and Veda means um, knowledge or science. So basically it is the science of life. And Ayurveda, you know, it's it's ancient, it's old. We To put a number on it, we say it's over 5,000 years old. Um, and it is the oldest ancient healing system in the world. And it originated in India. Um, and, you know, it's obviously I'm biased for <laughs> it, right? I'm only going to say um, the extra phenomenal good and I don't see anything bad um, with it. But you know, like Ayurveda, it's kind of like how you were saying with your dad, right? You found this individualized thing for him. And that's what Ayurveda does. It looks at the individual and it looks at it from this 
whole, right? This holistic healing science. There is a science to it, but the beauty of it, and this is one of my favorite parts, is there's this beautiful art behind it. Um, so we look at the individual as a whole, and we're going to diagnose and heal the individual as a whole, right? Um, you know, so everybody is so different. Everybody is so unique. And I'll get a little bit into further of how that uniqueness comes in. Um, and what I really kind of really enjoyed and what opened me up a lot to the kind of like my own healing journey with Ayurveda is we look at everything can be poison and everything can be medicine. Okay. It just depends who you're giving it to during what season, during what time, all these different things come into play. Um, so yeah, that's, <laughs> that's basically kind of like in a nutshell, Ayurveda. Okay, so that might have answered the next question I had, which um, you can add to it if you want. But I was going to ask you what originally got you um, into learning more about Ayurveda and wanting to be a student. Yeah, okay. So I've always kind of, you know, been a veggie eater. <laughs> but <laughs> you met me when I was like in that full transition. But even when I was younger, growing up in a Cuban household, what are you expected to eat? You know, like your main thing is protein, meat, bistec, uh, pork, chicken, everything. But like from the get-go, that's kind of always been like in the back of me. It's I've always been very veggie heavy. And it's just been like this long process of me realizing and understanding this is who I am and what, I, what, it, what it is. Um, <laughs> and as far as like... I'm trying to keep it like short because this can be like really extensive. <laughs> um, so yeah, just in that process, I was going through my own journey of like, okay, cutting out meat, being vegan for like six, seven years and vegetarian. Um, and then, you know, basically kind of, I was like in the health and food industry for a really long time, but still in the back of my head, like, okay, I, there's something more that I want and that is to my calling. And then unfortunately, but fortunately as well, um, my mother did get diagnosed with cancer. Unfortunately, she did pass away. But with all of that, <laughs> um, it helped bring me to a deepening in my holistic healing journey, seeing how like the Western medicine and doctors and everything is and are and how they deal with patients. I didn't agree with it fully. So after her passing, I know I needed to do a lot of healing. So the first thing that I thought was like, okay, on a spiritual level, what can I do? Yoga was the first thing that popped up in my head. Mm -hmm. So I looked up yoga places in like the Davy Pembroke Pines area. And then I found this ashram where they do yoga. And then just getting more involved in that, um, I slowly got introduced into Ayurveda as well. And then when I found out that I can study it, and take it to more than just healing myself, but helping others, that's where I was like, okay, this is a path that I want to do. <laughs> that's been kind of like slowly building and progressing since probably beyond this lifetime. Um, and I resonate with it. It's helped heal me in so many different certain aspects and everyone's still on their continuous healing journey, right? And I've seen how it's helped and heal other people and other individuals as well. So I'm definitely full in two feet, two hands. <laughs> I am like up to here <laughs> in Ayurveda. I'm really so glad that you are because you already know that you've helped me with like the smallest things, you know what I mean? But I can't wait for you to hopefully come back and open practice here, you know, whatever, whatever your will is. <laughs> Yeah, girl, it's in the works. Just give me two years. I got to finish <laughs> school first, okay? <laughs> okay, so next, if you can um, somehow break down the elements and doshas in Ayurveda. Yeah, so the world that we live in and also our physical self, meaning the physical body, it's broken down into five elements. Most of you are familiar with them. They're ether air, fire, water, and earth. This is the basic fundamental principle 
of the external world that we're living in and the internal makeup that makes up this physical body. So starting with that, in Ayurveda, we have something called doshas, or you can um, hear them also be called constitution, bodily constitutions. And what they are is there's three different types. All of them have all five elements, but each one has a majority of two that make them up. Okay. Okay. So for instance, the first element is called vata, V-A-T-A. -A. Vata dosha is primarily made up of ether and air. Okay. And actually, let me backtrack um, a little bit. So these bodily doshas um, from the moment of conception, so from the moment that the ovum meets the sperm, so many different factors come into play, right? The mood of both of the individuals, the mood in the room, the season, the time, um, karmic things come into play. But at that single moment where that meeting uh, point takes place, that's where you yourself, your bodily dosha or constitution or your makeup is formed and is created. Okay. Thanks. And I will say 99% of the time, that is what is going to stay with you for the entirety of this lifetime. Okay. okay. Um, that 1% where it can change is if something crazy dramatic happens in your life, say you're in like a crazy accident or you go through just something mind-blowingly insane, then things can get aggravated so much that then your uh, constitution can change. So knowing that in mind, which is pretty cool, um, you know, so Vata, right? It's mostly made up of ether and air and you can be predominant in one of these three doshas so the second dosha is called pitta and this one is mostly made up of fire and water okay and then the last one is called kapha kapha is mostly water and earth and then now to like break these three categories just so you can kind of have a little bit more of a picture in your head um, so vata dosha or vata constitution, right? Think ether and air. When you think of ether and air, what do you think of? Think of qualities that are light, that are dry, that are cold, that are rough, that are mobile, and that are clear. Okay, let's take it a little bit further. Knowing those qualities around those two elements, ether and air, um, you're going to have like a Vata dominant person is going to be someone that is super tall or super short. Okay. Uh. They're going to have like a long oval face. Um, they're going to be probably a little bit uh, cold hands and cold feet all the time. That mobile quality, they're always going to be a little bit of anxious. Um, there can be a little bit of fearfulness in there when it's out of balance. When it's in balance, they're gonna be creative. They're gonna be um, very like flexible, adaptable. Think of a person like who loves to travel. When you're learning something, if you understand something right away, but then you forget it right away, that's predominant vata. <laughs> um, if you're constipated, that's vata, right? When the stool is super dry, that's vata uh -huh, dominant. Um, they can have like very dry, brittle hair, sunken eyes, sunken cheeks, um, in a nutshell, that's kind of like a little bit of a book picture of, of Vata. And when we talk about these three doshas from a clinical aspect, um, and we'll kind of get more into like treatment and stuff a little bit later, but from a clinical aspect in Ayurveda, each dosha has a therapeutic main site. So what that means is vata, the main site is the colon. So if you have issues with your colon, then most likely there's going to be um, imbalances of vata dosha in the body, okay? Um, what else can I say about vata? Vata individuals, they shouldn't eat salads. 
right? In Ayurveda, like increases like, which is a big no-no. We want to substitute the opposite, so more balance and more equilibrium um, and a better state of health is, is brought up. So like I said, light, dry, cold, rough qualities. That's a lot of leafy greens, salads, anything too bitter, astringent, is going to cause vata to go out of whack um, and cause constipation, gas, gurgling, stomach, things like that. So vata should have warm, cooked, oily foods, things that are really grounding to help contain the ether and the air elements that can be so expansive. Um, and then pitta, the second dosha, is fire and water. Um, pitta individuals, they have a little bit more of like a tapering nose, a little bit more of like a heart-shaped face, tapering chin. Um, they tend to wear glasses or contacts. They, they can have early graying um, of the hair or even in like the guys, um, they start losing the hair and kind of like baldness starts to occur. Um, they have a really, really strong metabolism. A lot of you people probably know Pitta dominant individuals. Um, Pitta dominant individuals are very bright, intelligent. They seek knowledge. These people have like multiple masters, multiple PhDs. Um, they love reading books. They're great leaders. They're great speakers. Um, when it's in balance, when it's out of balance, they're going to be more towards anger, jealousy, um, because that fire is there with mm -hmm. their metabolism. They're so hungry all the time. So Pitta people get hangry. They have to eat on time or else they're just going to get very, very hangry. Um, and normally their body is a little bit medium, um, not too light, not too thin, not too heavy, but medium stature. And also out of balance, they can have like acne, prone to like sensitive skin, um, qualities with pitta there's light as well but then there's oily there's heat um so in ayurveda we talk a lot about the stool it's probably like bowel movements or it's like top of the tier um discussion um so vato is more constipation pitta is going to be more loose stools more more diarrhea um, when it's out of balance and then the main therapeutic site for pitta is the small intestines, where the small intestines is where the main absorption of the food happens. Um, so if you have diarrhea, you'll have like loose stools and you'll see like those loose particles and you know that your small intestines is not working probably, pro properly mm -hmm. and not absorbing the nutrients um, that it needs. And then the last one is kapha. So kapha deals with water, an earth element. And before I describe a little bit about kapha individuals, I feel with a little bit of experience that I've had, um, the outside perspective kapha can be looked at as like, oh, a bad thing, I don't want kapha. Um, and I want you right now to get that out of your mind, out of your brain, okay? Um, kapha is uh, water and earth. So it's going to be an individual is going to be a little bit heavier, right? You know, um, kapha out of balance are people who are a little bit um, overweight, may have like obesity, diabetes, things of that nature. Um, they just have stronger bone structure. There's so much earth element there that naturally they're just heavier. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, we all need kapha in our life. If we don't have proper lubrication, you know, our joints, we're going to get osteoporosis or arthritis, you know, things of that nature. So kapha individuals, they're just the super sweetest, most loving, affectionate person. The best way to think of it is like, think of like your, your like grandmother, <laughs> who just wants you to like eat all the time and like 
y you like go ahead nena quiere comer más <laughs> you know um and the main therapeutic site um for kapha is going to be in the stomach but also the chest area as well Um, so yes, when kapha is in balance, they're super loving, they're super sweet, super affectionate. When they're out of balance, they're going to be too attached. Depression, um, you know, just think of like heaviness, um, you know, attachment, greed, things of that nature. They love chocolate cookie and candy. Um, they love sitting around and doing nothing. They can sleep all day and be content. When you have the Vata person who's just like running around, high anxiety, just like, ah. And then you have like the Pitta person in the corner, just like wanting to read, wanting to study, um, or wanting to control everything and be in control. In a nutshell, trying to paint a little bit of like um, a picture from the physical body, but Vata, Pitta, and Kapha they're not just present in the physical, right? Because they're made up of elements and these elements are everywhere, external in and internal. So let's talk about seasons, okay? So right now we're in summer season. Which dosha do you guys think is predominant in summer season? It's hot. It's just hot. <laughs> I'm gonna say kapha because it's wet. But I feel like that's not. So it depends where you're at too, right? So in Florida, it's very rainy, wet, humid, hot. So it's going to be more pitta kapha, okay? Okay. Summer in general is more pitta, right? Pitta is fire and water. Just think heat. Mm. Um, pitta deals with digestion, um, uh, simulation, and absorption. It's like metabolism, Okay. Um, so summer season is pitta season. Um, winter season, not in Florida or South Florida, but in the majority of the world where there's like seasons, um, you know, winter is more cold, it's damp, it's heavy. Um, so that's more kapha driven. Mm -hmm. okay. or, and then vata, again, not talking about South Florida, <laughs> um, But Vata, again, it's cold, it's mobile, it's light. So fall season is mostly where Vata is predominating, okay? And then spring can be a little big mixture of like Vata and Kapha. So when you, so what is the importance of me telling you this, okay? It's not just because I want to sound like cool because I know all this stuff, no. <laughs> um, like I said, in Ayurveda, like increases like. And that's a no-no in most situations. What we want to do is we want to substitute the opposite, okay? So if like increases like, that's what's going to create um, illnesses and diseases in the body. Mm -hmm. If you balance it with the opposite quality, that's when proper health and healing happens, okay? So if it's summer season like right now, um, you know pitta is dominant outside, It's very hot, right? Are you going to go at 12 o'clock noon for lunch and have, um, you know, red wine with some, you know, uh, crazy amount of like chili on your food, um, a hot bowl of soup with just like chili peppers and things like that and everything fermented? You can and you can try it, <laughs> but I promise you if you do do that, you're not going to feel good. You're going to be only creating extra heat in the body. And again, that's a no-no. So we want to substitute the opposite. If you know it's summer, you want to do things that are opposite. You want to eat things that are a little bit sweeter, a little bit more cooling and refreshing um, and still light. So having like a nice green juice or having like a nice salad or something with like cilantro and lime or leafy greens. That is like the knowledge I want to kind of portray to you and to anybody who's <laughs> here uh, listening. It's just like the power that Ayurveda has. If you can understand the elements that are going on outside and understand your elements that are going inside, 
and it's always in a constant flux, right? right? Everything's changing. Things change. Your mood, your emotions change just because if you see something or if you think of something. Um, so you have to kind of, the more you know, the more that you're able to kind of adjust with everything that's constantly moving and keep your body at more of a um, equilibrium state. I think that's one of the last things, or like I should say, one of the more recent things that you taught me about Ayurveda was how the seasons play a role. And I was mind blown because I always understood like the very minimal, the basics that, you know, we have, we're dominant in two um, doshas, right? Am I saying that right? Doshas, and, yeah. <laughs> and I understood that that affects, that should affect your diet and what you eat and when and all that sort of thing. But I didn't realize it also fluctuates with the seasons, which makes it so much more intricate and so much more in detail, which I want to remind people why we're doing just an introductory talk today. Because we've literally, you have literally touched the tip of the iceberg, I feel like. Like there's so much more, so, so much more when it comes to talking about Ayurveda and what it is and what it can do for you, how it works. Like we could literally talk for hours on end about this, but I feel like it's so important to get the basics um, and just understand it at this level first before people go off and start Googling or like self-diagnosing themselves. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, don't self-diagnose yourself. <laughs> please, please, please come talk to me or come talk to another, you know, professional. Um, and like what you said, it's so interesting that it's attached to the seasons, but it's also attached to like your age. Mm. What, what phase are you, you know, in your life? Are you five? Are you 30? Are you 70? Um, Cause there's doshas that dominate in that aspect as well. Um, you know, so it's just like, so for instance, sorry, I know we're like on a time, but sometimes I <laughs> get really excited and I just want to <laughs> say a lot, but for instance, so, Kapha, if you think of the qualities that I told you about Kapha, um, what age do you think Kapha is related to? Do you think it's related to like a baby, an adult, or an elderly person? And also think of like the physical um, attributes and characteristics of someone who's like, again, five years old versus someone who's 30 versus someone who's 70. And it's okay, Dre, I don't want to put you yeah. on, like... <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating, because I want to say I would, I would like, correlate it with an elderly person, but I feel like that's because you mentioned, the, like, the grandma telling you to eat your soup. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. No, so, yeah, I can see where that's confusing. But kapha age is basically anything from a newborn to, like, 15-ish years of oh, age, okay. right? Think of, like, a baby. They're chubby, they're chunky, mm -hmm. they're delicious, they got all these little rolls... You know, um, babies just want to sleep all the time, oh, that's good. Um, uh. things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, Pitta is more so from like 15-ish years of age up to your adulthood. So like we say like 50, 55 years old, right? It's like you're go, you know, go, go, go. You're going to school. You're getting your education. You're, some people are burning both can the candle at both ends. Um, this is where like you your pitta is like your most dominant dosha overall. Um, and then vata is more of like, kind of like the elderly, right? 55 and older. What do you see in older people? They start deteriorating a little bit. They get skinnier. Maybe like they shrink. Um, they have bone issues, mm. things of like that. So it, it deals with age. It deals with the season. If you look at 24 hours in a day, you can even break up the doshas in wow. that day. <laughs> wow. So intricate. Yeah. This intro is as deep as it is. Imagine like if we were, were to really like, we could, we could literally make a whole series on this. I just, <laughs> <laughs> um, we can spend hours talking like, about this. We have a question here. What happens with the states and places that have no seasons, which I figure is they mean kind of like South Florida <laughs> or other places, I guess. Yeah, for sure. So then if you know what your main dominant dosha is, what your constitution is, and then if you live in a state, for example, South Florida, right, where it's basically summer season all the time, um, which deals with pitta, 
you just need to know where you're at and what elements are at play, right? So again, I'm going to use South Florida as an example. So Pitta is dominant because of the summer, because of the heat, um, because it's at sea level. But then there's also a lot of water, um, mm -hmm. you know, especially now hurricane season, right? Um, that deals a lot more with kapha. Storms, hurricanes, that's more vata, but let's take that out of the equation. So South Florida is more pitta dominant, dominant, kapha secondary, okay? If you know this already, then you're ahead of the game, right? So that means that you just have to adapt to that, okay? Mm -hmm. So eat things that are lighter. But kapha, it's going to absorb, it's mostly water, right? Like increases like, okay? So as we all know, we step outside in Florida and we're like sweating like crazy. So yes, you have to hydrate and hydration is um, essential. You need it for your cells. Um, but you don't want to overhydrate because if you overtax the system with water, what's going to happen? Your kapha is going to increase. And when your kapha increases, what are the main therapeutic sites of kapha? Your stomach and your lungs, right? If kapha increases, and this is not just going to happen because you drink too much water. I'm just like trying to kind of create a, bit, a bigger picture for you. If your kapha goes out of balance, you can get cold, cough, congestion. You can get things like edema, swelling of the feet, of the ankles, mm -hmm. um, all these different aspects. And again, we can spend hours with this, but like vata, pitta, kapha, there's foods that... Um, you should eat and that you shouldn't eat with them, um, you know, and this changes with the seasons. So it's kind of easier if you live in a state that the seasons don't change so much because you have to do maybe like less work in that aspect, right? Yeah. If you come here to like New Mexico, where I'm at in Albuquerque, we have the majority of all four seasons. Mm. So what I'm eating and what my routine is right now in like the bleak mid of summer is going to be totally different than like the peak of winter in January and February. I have to do my groceries different, you know, what I'm buying different, how I'm cooking, how I'm planning different. All of that has to kind of like fluctuate and change. Yeah. So I harmonize my body with nature. Wow, man, you have to be so intentional to be able to do that. Like, that's when you really notice like we really live such fast-paced lives because that does sound simple you know like you should be able to do that if it's for your health but that sounds already like such a commitment but like it's so important it is right health is your greatest wealth and I feel like the older somebody gets if you're more aware and conscious of your body and your mental and emotional state you're gonna see the changes like mm -hmm. wow I'm digesting my food differently or you know all these stressors <laughs> from work that you know before I would be able to kind of just like brush off and not affect me it's affecting me I'm swallowing it and you know I'm depositing these um, things in my body that are coming out as these symptoms as like depression or anxiety or you know so many different other factors yeah so yes Ayurveda can look like a lot but if you know the foundation, and unfortunately, I won't be able to tell you everything of the foundation um, with like this first talk, it's just like super, super intro. Mm -hmm. But if you learn that foundation, you're going to be able to build on it. Um, and you'll see how just like the little bit of change. Um, and that can be like as simple as adding fresh lime on your meal versus adding like cayenne pepper or black pepper on your meal can make a world of a difference depending on so many different circumstances so please if this feels overwhelming just take like a big breath <laughs> um it's not it's just like when you hear it first it's a new language it's a new topic it's um, mm -hmm. something that can seem like very far off but it's really really simple once you understand the elements and the qualities and the doshas so good. Okay, so to circle back a little bit, um, you know, we started talking in the beginning about how this um, practice and in in Ayurvedic medicine is such like an individualized, um, you know, form of health and form of treatment. 
I know that I'm the kind of person who'd want to jump online and like find out what my doshas are. So in case anybody else is very curious about what they are and they want to find out, how can they do that responsibly? <laughs> yes, responsibly, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, so there's a lot of books and things that you can read. Obviously, like the first one that I will say is go see someone who's knowledgeable. Go see a, an Ayurvedic counselor, go see an Ayurvedic practitioner. If you have a consultation with them, there's a process and they'll be able to tell you your, your dominant doshas, okay, or dosha. If you don't want to do that and if you don't want to wait for that, um, there is a really cool company. I buy products from them all the time. They, they are called Banyan Botanicals. Um, I'm going to write it for that. Yeah. So I think it's just like banyanbotanicals.com and it shouldn't be anything too crazy. It, you should, it should say something like take the doshic quiz or something around that. Um, it's what Ban I or Y? B-A-N-Y-A-N. Oh. Ban <laughs> banyanbotanicals.com. And they're an Ayurvedic company. They have amazing products and really awesome articles that, you know, kind of go a little bit further into detail into Vata, Pitta, Kapha and the doshas and what that should be with like food and diet and lifestyle. But again, this is just like a quiz online. So take it with like a grain of salt because it's questions that you are going to answer based off of your like subjective views of yourself. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's nice to have um, somewhat of an avenue that you know of. But to know for sure, I mean, you just have to go to see a real professional that can see you and talk to you and um, tell you what your dominant dosha is. And once you have that, you can do so much with it. So much with it. That's like the first step. So uh, someone asked here, are we made up of all three and just more prominent in one? I want to say yes, right? But you could be prominent in one or two? Yes, correct. Okay. So we're made up of all of the elements and we're going to have all, we need all three of those doshas, right? Like I said, um, if you don't have enough kapha, you're, you're going to be super emaciated you're, you know, um, you need coffee, you need the lubricant, you need pitta for the metabolism, you need vata for like the movement and the communication with the cells and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just individuals either are dominant in one or dominant in two. Mm -hmm. um, if you're dominant in three, I've never seen that before, but that'd be pretty awesome to be balanced in, in all of them. Good thing, right? Yeah, that'd be a really good thing. And I'm, I feel like I n knew about Ayurveda before, but I think I'm understanding it more now after this talk. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of it is like just common sense stuff that like once you hear, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. But it's things mm -hmm. that we don't like sit, right? Like you said, we're so go, go, go all the time. Technology, this, we want things instant. Um, you know, and we don't kind of see like the true nature of what it is. Um, if you sit down and you really feel and sit with it and listen to it, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. If it's crazy hot outside, maybe I shouldn't have something that's hot. Maybe I should do the opposite and have <laughs> right. something that's cooling, you know? Yeah. And do you yourself, now that people know you and have heard from you, have services that you offer? Yeah, for sure. So I'm in summer right now. Like I said, I just did my two year practitioner level and I'm going to be going on two more years to my doctorate program. Um, I would definitely free in the summer. Um, now, once school starts, it's going to be a little bit more complex because it's going to be a full time program. Um, but yeah, I mean, even if you don't want a full consultation with me, even just like reach out to me like let's just have like a little conversation if you have like random questions I'd be more than happy to ask them or to answer them you know um, it's just like if you come to me with a health issue I there's a process that I have to go through to understand you as your entirety um, and see where you're at so I can give you the proper recommendations and like the proper treatments um, but please don't be shy. Don't be scared. Like if you have my number, reach out to me. 
if you know obviously if you're following me on instagram just like send me a message um i just want to be able to like spread ayurveda um, as much as i can and like i said the complexities will become less strained um the more that you know and the more that you kind of like go through it and you'll have like a lot of aha moments like yeah that makes total sense (laughs) um this last question, feel free to speed through it. I know this has been a long conversation or you can go in depth, but to wrap it up, um, not that you're going to be giving like, you know, you may not be doing a full consultation for someone, um, but if someone's curious about going and finding a practitioner, um, what would treatment or like medicine look like in, in something like this? Yeah, so it'll vary individual to individual. Um, It can be lifestyle changes as something as simple as like, hey, let's look at your bedtime routine. What are you doing with your bedtime routine? Or hey, let's look at your morning routine. What time are you waking up? Are you drinking a glass of water um, before you put coffee or tea or food? Are you tongue scraping? Um, So like little lifestyle recommendations like that, obviously food, Um, we heal, we can heal the body through spices, through what we eat. Um, we have senses everywhere. So what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we touch, what we taste, all of that is medicine or all of that can be poison. Um, but in Ayurveda, we're really big on spices and just food. Uh, something as simple as yoga. Uh, yoga is considered the sister science of Ayurveda. So Ayurveda and yoga are like this. (laughs) You kind of can't have one without the other. So certain breathing techniques, certain yoga, um, either like a full practice or certain postures, meditation. There's herbs are really big. Uh, Herbal protocols, uh, different treatments, cleansing programs as much as like a one day mono cleanse with kitchery or like a five to even like a whole month kind of cleanse situation. There's hands-on manual therapies that we do with like actually Mm -hmm. touching the body and like physically doing body work with oils um, or just like working with energy points. Um, And just to like speak briefly on it, um, it really depends on the individual and just you know, what dosha, what qualities, what things need um, realignment and balance. I love it. I love that it's about balance. And I'm just going to wrap it up there because we've said like a million times that we can keep talking. And I really could. You're so fun to talk to about anything really, but especially Ayurveda because you're so passionate about it. And because after two years, you are like, you are just so knowledgeable about this stuff. And any question I have, you always have an answer. It's amazing. So anybody that's watched this, I really encourage to go hit up Ashley um, or find yourself a practitioner in the area. Just do whatever it takes. If you're interested, don't don't ignore that interest. It's something that can bring you to balance, like Ashley was saying, and, and to healing and to health. Um, I am so grateful for you taking this time, considering that you're in summertime right now. Um, and I just, I want everyone to send energies your way that you come and decide to make a practice here in South Florida when you come oh, back. Oh, Dre, it's in the works. Like I said, all my seeds are planted. I definitely want to come back home and set up, you know, an establishment there. And, um, I don't want to give too much details out, but yeah, <laughs> things are planned. Things are structured. It's just, I, I need the knowledge first and then I'll cool. come back. Okay. Guys, if you enjoyed this and you want to know more, let me know. Obviously I can set you up with Ashley or if we want a, an intro too, we might get one. I don't know. This was a really long time and I'm so grateful again for your time. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, Ash. Thanks, Dre, for having me. Thank you, everybody. Love Happy you, girl. Thursday. Talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Bye.